carriers are cool. Floating airfields that not only provide a great deal of spectacle, but are also almost comically useful to the point where they render two entire classes of ship completely fucking irrelevant. However, jumping back to the period between the two big ones, when carriers were still in their relative infancy, shows a slightly different picture. Most countries still saw the battleship as a way to go, but they didn't discount carriers entirely. The British were messing around with them as early as the First World War, and both the United States and Japan would quickly pick up and do some experimenting of their own. Other countries would follow suit with some of their own memory, but one nation that has a particularly unique relationship with the CV is Germany. Now Germany just put a pretty funny and relatively unknown person in charge called Adolf Hitler, and he really liked military stuff. One of the things he wanted was a big fuck-off navy to be able to challenge everybody. And one part of a wholesome, balanced navy is, of course, the aircraft carrier, which he wanted a few of as well, because I guess he was running through a toy catalog and just circling shit or something. Regardless, Germany's wacky CV adventure would certainly be an interesting one. Their first attempt is also their most well-known and memorable. For starters, they decided to go all-in and ground up a carrier program without attempting conversions of other ships first. For a nation with no prior carrier experience, this was certainly a rather bold move. The plan was to build four ships of this class, but only two would end up being laid down. The first being the Graf Zeppelin, and the second being the... we'll get to that. Much of the design of these ships was fairly standard for aircraft carriers. They would have a rough average displacement of about 33,000 tons, a decent top speed of 35 knots, and an air wing of 43 planes. So what was the problem with them? I'll give you a hint. So they had two main issues that would have made their performance questionable at best. The first and the most glaring is that they wanted to strap it with 16 cruiser caliber guns. Why? The official reason was the rather outlandish idea that it would have to fight off surface combatants, which is dumb. Generally, if your carrier is close enough to the enemy that it can use its guns, you are too damn close, and are probably as good as dead. Secondly, they had planned for all aircraft launches to be steam catapult based. This is not ideal because steam catapults are very slow. Assuming perfect conditions, they could launch one plane every 30 seconds until they hit about 18 planes, afterwards requiring almost an hour to recharge the catapults. This would not be good in an actual battle situation, but it's ultimately impossible to know since they never actually were fielded. This steam catapult fixation would be present in all of their carrier designs because old habits die hard, I guess. As I said before, four were planned, but only two were laid down. They suffered from every problem under the sun, from lack of resources and laborers to borderline ADHD on behalf of the government, not knowing what the fuck it wanted to focus on. Graf Zeppelin was launched in 1938 officially, but would never be completed fully because the Germans had bigger concerns at that point. Construction was completely cancelled in 1943, and she spent the next two years existing in a state of limbo, sitting in port. She was scuttled in 1945, then raised by the Soviets, who then blew her up as target practice. Her sister, meanwhile, was never officially named, but probably would have been called Peter Strasser, depending on how accurate you consider a particular mobile game to be. She did even less, being laid down in 38 and having construction stopped in 39. She then sat on the slipway for a year and was eventually scrapped. Overall, not a great start, but surely it gets better, right? No, not really. The next plan was to start the right way by converting shit. The passenger liner Europa was chosen for this particular task. It would have been bigger than Graf, but slower as a result. It was an improvement over the Graf as well, no more dumbass cruiser guns being the big one. However, it had its own problems, primarily a fair bit of structural weakness, so it would have to be rebuilt and reinforced. And it would have guzzled gas that Germany just didn't have. It also suffered from a pretty bad case of Hermann Goering being a petty cunt and not wanting to give over any of his planes. Ultimately, the project would be cancelled and work never began, so there isn't much to talk about. At the same time, they also planned to convert two other passenger liners, planning to name these two Jade and Elba. They were designed to be closer to escort carriers, being much smaller and carrying fewer aircraft. As is tradition at this point with these cursed ships, their design struggled to work around the structural and balance issues that come with converting another ship into a carrier. The plan being to give them stability bulges and concrete armor below the waterline? I guess to make it more bottom heavy? Honestly, the fuck if I know. Anyways, work on Jade never began, while well, work on Elba started and was cancelled like two months later because Admiral Raider resigned due to the fact that Hitler wanted the entire surface fleet scrapped after their spectacularly poor performance at the Battle of the Barents Sea, a far cry from his original enthusiasm over building a big dick navy. The fourth hull of the Admiral Hipper class of heavy cruisers is 95% complete and sitting in port. What do we do? Try to make a carrier out of it, of course. It was going to weigh in somewhere between the Jade class and Graf, but also carry less planes because reasons, I guess. So in 1942, they stripped 2,000 tons of shit from her, including her entire superstructure and all armament, excluding her AA guns, renaming her to Vesser, and started their conversion work. 
This didn't get very far, because again, mild ADHD and they honestly had bigger concerns than building boats at that point. They moved her out of the way and eventually scuttled her in 1945. The last one wasn't even German. They had an incomplete French cruiser, the De Grasse, sitting in one of their occupied ports and said, fuck it, let's give it a shot. It would have weighed much less than Vesser and would have carried a couple more planes, but the overall design was still similar as far as conversions go. As is tradition, the project had several problems. For one, the engine was French and needed to be worked around. It also had shortages of stuff to convert it with, and if that wasn't enough, they were well in range of Allied bombers ruining their day. So, as is tradition, the project was scrapped in 1943, and Hitler finally said, Fuck this shit, I'll just build bigger tanks. The ship would be recaptured by the French and completed as a cruiser after the war. So that concludes the German carrier experience. Unsurprisingly, a nation with no experience in this particular field did not exactly perform all that well. Even if they had gone somewhere with the carriers, I doubt they would have had any effect on the war. They most likely would have gone the way of the Bismarck and been focused as soon as they were even seen out of port. They also would mark the last nail in the coffin for the idea of German naval supremacy, conspiring with the catastrophic naval losses they had experienced throughout the war to kill any hopes pretty quickly. This made Hitler pretty sad, but he's Hitler, so who gives a shit? The money no longer spent chasing carriers would instead go to more undersea boots, which would at least have a somewhat tangible effect on the war. Ultimately, the German carrier program is just another entry on the list of mediocre ideas that really went nowhere.